In this video, we're going to learn about how while loops can help us write more sophisticated programs. Let's get started. We use if statements to have Tracy make decisions, but what if that decision isn't a one-time choice? For example, if I'm hungry, I should eat food. But what if I eat a snack and I'm still hungry? Well, I should eat something else. I only want to stop eating when I'm full, but to use if statements to complete this code, we would need to write many lines of repeating if statements. We may think to use a for loop in this scenario, but in order to use a for loop, I need to know the exact number of times I need to repeat the commands below. If I don't know this value, a for loop can't be used. This is where while loops come in handy. We can use a while loop to repeat certain commands as long as the condition remains true. In this case, I will keep eating food while I'm hungry. Once I'm not hungry anymore, the condition is false and the code will stop running. To write a while loop, we simply use the word while and follow it by a condition and a colon. The condition is written the same way we write conditions in if statements, and the commands we want to perform while the condition is true are indented below. There is one thing to be cautious of when writing while loops. If we use a condition that never becomes false, our code will repeat indefinitely, and we will have created what is called an infinite loop. Creating a loop that never ends will cause the program to crash, so make sure you include a stopping point where your condition becomes false. One way around creating an infinite loop is to use a break statement. To use a break statement, we simply write the keyword break whenever the condition we want to end the loop with becomes true. Note that no parentheses are used. When the break statement is reached, the program will simply exit the while loop it was in and move to the next lines of code. Because we have break statements available, we may even want to use a condition that we would never want to use without them. We can use the condition while true, which would lead to an infinite loop if we did not use a break statement. As long as there is a scenario where the break statement can be reached, this type of forever loop is okay to include in our programs. Let's take a deeper look at how a while loop works. Here's an example. We are asking the user if they want to draw a circle. The user has entered yes. The while condition is then true, so the commands below are performed. And Tracy draws a circle, and the user is asked again if they want a circle. The condition is then checked and still found true, so Tracy draws a circle and asks the user again. The condition is still true, so Tracy draws another circle and the user is asked again. Notice that as long as the user answers yes, the code will keep running. The condition is checked and is now found false, so the code ends. We can rewrite this program to use a forever loop using while true to provide the same functionality. Instead of asking the user for input both inside and outside the while loop, we can simply use while true to start the program. Then we can ask the user if they want to draw a circle. If they say yes, we will draw the circle and then we'll skip the else statement and return back to the while condition, which is still true, and we will ask them for input again. This will continue as long as the user continues to enter yes. If they say anything other than yes, we will reach the break statement and we'll exit the while loop. In this lesson, we learned how while loops can be used to repeat code while a condition remains true, and how the break statement can be used to exit out of while loops.